so now we have the engine the structural engineers report on the uh, structure and very quickly to go to number two uh, present condition of structure this is 2018 so this was repaired prepared on uh, uh, expected completion on September 6 2018 um, over a month's time it was completed uh, do, 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 president all right this is handed over to the building department, Surside. This is their report, their part of their uh, report minimum inspection procedural guidelines for buildings structural recertification. So there is a, so I stand a little corrected because the report that it just said the engineer, they had this recertification program said it just needed to uh, state that, hey, they're good to go. But apparently that's not true. That link I found obviously didn't link me further into pages like this. I look at it on search side. <clears throat> well, I would have dived into this. I would have found this. But I couldn't find anything further than an architect or an engineer needs to sign off on a building. But now we clearly see a, a building department uh, structural certificate and it appears to be um, broken down. There's Frank. All right. So there's the location, the towers, um, classification residential R2 um, 60, 68 units which is approximately 50% of the total number this is inspected units um, common areas pool decks and parking garage so 68 units is, is a nice depending on where they're located you know and what do you consider a unit um, apartment units it just says units I'm kind of crazy that way um, so settlement it says good no no building settlement observed. Then why is it just good? Uh, is this the way the description he gives? Meaning it's just you know, you know, you just say good. Is this is is this his highest mark for nothing observed? No bulging observed. Good. Okay, so it's just, is so his there is nothing above his good, I guess, um, that says best or better. Um, so. It's just put good. No building settlement observed. So this is this is an amazing thing and it observed, and this would be at that time. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen after that time. So no building settlement observed. No indicators of building settlement observed is what you'd want to see here. But he just said no building settlement observed, which would be literally you're looking at the building and you're trying to figure out. Every, that's the literal one. But. The common man understanding should come into play here too with this wording, since we're using common language now in this report. Um, it should be more behind that, I think. I'd like to say none observe, or or I'd like to see something or something in the indicating, like a, you know, looking at the parking garage deck, at the all interactions between the parking garage decks and the columns. We see no settlement there, so no indication of like puncture around there. Underside, same way. Um, and then uh, we looked at the uh, grade, the grade, and we see the stucco paint lines are the same as they were, you know, 1979. Um, the uh, things like that. Deflection, good. Deflection observed were minor in, na in nature and with an acceptable industry standards. So, what deflection is referring to in the entire 68 units then? Because he, he, he expected 68 units, but this says good, fair, poor, explained is if significant. That's there. So, uh, and this is about the structure. He only saw 68%, but yet he says deflection is good. Deflection observed were minor in nature and within acceptable standards. Let's just jump down to deflection. All right, don't get excited yet. Because for steel to, to be active, it's got to get, get a load on it. And you do get some cracks when you a lot of times when you get steel active. So you, you see these underside. I don't think we're in a parking garage area. Columns there, number 76, ironically. I think 76 is where the firemen are back here, I think. Um, so to, to steel will be active, it will, it will get, create some cracking. Tension on the bottom and compression cracks up top. He says his are less than, I think, one millimeter or two millimeter, one millimeter. Anyway, hairline cracks at underside of uh, floor slabs and garage. Hairline cracks. Um, you usually measure them, photograph them. Um, but this is water. This is water right here. This is the rust coming through. 
there's a significant amount of water. This is also uh, could be the reinforcement getting ready to uh, spall off that uh, surface there. This is just water. It appears this this would be what I theorize here. <clears throat> no rebar is laid in this in this pattern. See the pattern. So water is coming. The the, the the concrete that the stack deflected. And with that said, it breaks the concrete bond. Uh, sometimes the bond is broken if it's too much deflection. And now that gives a different path for water to come out. Also, it could be surface water that comes here and uh, capillary action takes a, a path over time and you can get this, uh, this uh, salt air water deteriorating this surface, whatever this may be. I don't know what kind of material that is, what paint, if you will, that's causing this blistering here. Um, this could be above the pool. This might be the pool or it could be just a floor drain somehow. But he mentioned before, I think there are no floor drains. Somehow it has to evaporate. So if I see a drain here, I'm wondering, well, where's this drain? What's this What's this for? It's a standpipe for something else. I mean, a, uh, a downspout and gutter for something else. There's the minor impact from vehicles. I don't know if that's even a vehicle, how low it is. And so if it's not a vehicle and it's that low, what caused this damage? Snow plow? Well, no. Why is it there? Why is it way down here, this one? And yet it's been painted over. So this was damaged and painted after the fact. So there, is, there, is there a patch behind this paint? Did someone patched it? And then uh, patched it and painted over it. And then a little chip came off of flaking and then painted again. I mean, it, it can be steps like that to get you here. Um, column damage at ground floor. All right, we look at that. Now more images appear in my, I don't know why more images are appearing now in my, in my, in my, uh, in my link, but here they are. Um, this is the stucco. You can see that's a bead, an exterior metal bead of a type. Maybe, maybe it's even plastic. I don't know. I don't know what, when they install this facade. But this would hide uh, what's behind there. You can't tell. And I believe that's plywood. I think that's what he referenced. So this is, this is, uh, um, you know, intriguing to say the least. So you're looking at a lot of stucco. All this little craftsmanship, fit and finish, is kind of uh, kind of sucks. Um, and that huge ass bubble there, and that's that's some you know that's, that's some weird shit. All right, odd. I don't know what this is ra wrapping around here. It's oh, what, what this what this is. It's just a hold back plants or something of that nature, keep back something. But he's got efflorescence here, apparently, uh, and also the column is set inside the concrete, which allows it to, uh, well, I don't know if it's aluminum or not, but if it's aluminum, I would get efflorescence. So I, I don't know what's going on with that concrete. Water intrusion at, at rail post. But it looks like efflorescence also, so like a concrete. Um, they're the pavers. They butt up to there. They don't allow expansion, apparently. So the thermal expansion of the pavers and concrete, it looks like they just go at each other. Um, yeah, this is this is interesting because it's, it's a painted surface, but yet we're still getting what appears to be efflorescence again. So this paint is not stopping the water penetration, apparently. This is the underside of one of the decks as you look up. The golf golf club idea. He went at it with the golf club. But he just called for extensive repair. So, I, you know, thinking about the golf club, going back at that again, not, not hating on the guy. What's the point if I just sound it with a golf club or with a hammer? Uh, it's interesting that he called himself out with a golf club. Um, so if you sound it with a golf club and you hear the, uh, the, the, the hollow echo, the tapping, the, the non-solid bounce back he called for the repairs anyway so it's not like he needs to do more testing besides a, a core sample would be great to since he's the i don't know what his budget is or things like that but but he's saying repair it so i'm trying to work for in his favor right now so i'm working for and against right so instead of attacking i'm trying to say okay well he said repair it so maybe maybe his idea of repairing in the future would have included core samples of the existing concrete compression testing him and checking the steel and then to make a determination of how far he would go back on his repair per deck or all the decks they're all life safety 
So I would, you know, so what the cost, you know, that each one of these deserve a core sample. Each one of these decks deserves one because each one has a person, a family that's going to use them, occupy them. Here is the balcony soft deterioration. It looks like some nice size rebar there. The spacing seems pretty, pretty close. The, here's the fine hairline cracking that appears to be paste over. There's no water getting to it. It doesn't appear to be efflorescence. So that's some mapping going on. Um, of the reinforcement below, I believe, below the surface. So we got some, it's, it's very light. I've seen much heavier than that. Here's that piece of steel I keep coming back to, that red on the, the roof deck, right? And there's it, there it is. He's saying, even dressed that saying, you know, fix this, clean up. With that said, look at the next image. The roof, let's, we can put the bed, the rest, re, the bed, the, uh, the roof. This appears to be the roof repair that everyone's asking about, this lighter color stone. And all this area here, apparently, like right, roughly from here over to there, um, it appears they did repaired roof area, repaired, past tense. So there's the documentation of it. And it's probably all the way back to here, and they just intermix some, some of the stones, ballast. Um, but it's repaired. It's done. Um, with that said, he used um, three of his people to uh, to do this, um, to do his inspections, I believe. Um, structural repairs required described. Samples chipped out in small areas. E. Samples chipped out in small areas. Structural repairs required described. And he says E. Samples chipped out in small areas. So, E. So we go to general condition. Windows and sli sliding doors are in good condition. That's a sub under E there. Wood framing. So we go to, uh, this might be the forms, uh, um, the forms identification form. The form that you literally fill out, the tw that date, not, not the, uh, Cracking and balcony floor slabs at sliding door threshold. Cracking at balcony floor slabs at sliding door threshold. It's, the whole thing's about settlement and the columns. You know, they're, they're the critical things. Of course, the flooring is too, and the interactions with the columns. This is really nasty. Um, no, no core samples taken, apparently. Uh, and this one's kind of, well, how did you get that chipped off? How did you get you that? I think it might be multiple repairs, like I said. This one is very interesting also, again, because of the, uh, yeah, because it appears to be regular human traffic, not, not car traffic. See the smaller gate? And I don't know how long this has been here, but this appears to be a smaller gate. And maybe cars can go on this side if it swings open. But, so we don't have, so we, we're getting some, we're getting something that's causing this concrete to spall off in this huge capacity exposing itself. And that, that I wish we had more pictures of that. I wish we had a lot more. And I wish he had some core samples that he took. Here's the gate, I believe, on the other. That's the gate. Let's see. Two, some electrical conduit there. Electrical conduit there. Apparent appears to be electrical conduit. Um, tighter spacing here. Tidy space in here, so I and we, so I would put us on the in, uh, flip side of that gate, and that's that's the other direction. That's in here, I believe, and on this side, we're this side of it. So this might be for traffic, and over here is the other side of that continuously continuing cross inside the well, uh, covered area, I believe. So because of shading and everything, and we're getting some serious. Wish we knew what we were looking at. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is I uh, um, probably your car goes across a sensor that opens the gate for people. This probably is the gate, the uh, car entrance, and the human net traffic entrance, walking act, human trafficking, human walk. Uh, yeah, you got to use words differently these days, right? That's the human traffic entrance. All right, so then we've got this huge maybe rush jacking going on. And so this steel is starting to look very questionable to me. 
So we can, uh, it's really that, that, that there in a covered area with no salts, ah, uh, no salts, my ass, right? There's salts from the uh, cars and all, but look where they are. I mean, was this always over here like that? And why would it not be where the cars stop? More salts and deterioration over here, we can't see. Why would it be over here? You know, wiper blades throwing it over. One, everybody stop there and a wiper blade throws the salt off the windshield from the rain over to there and over there. No, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't get that. But I, you know, see how crazy my mind thinks. It will, it will try to evaluate some way to put a consistent pattern here. And all I can come up with is, uh, since we don't have, we got it in cover, covered, um, we got to go reaching for the steel now. The steel as being, uh, subpar so that's where i'm leaning now we got to find some subpar steel here we don't have to but that's where my brain is biasly going now it's biasly going towards and i'm not even counting this as subpar because the water it, it, there's nothing here to stop the water from rolling back around i'm going to take you into a place in the chester pennsylvania maybe today and i'm going to show you this major repair that is going to include this that i have to deal with and include some spalling like this on a tapered porch. But what a capillary action come around here and really beat the hell out of you. But the, um, and, and I wanted to say, and I was going to do a video on it to show people how to retrofit cheap, not have to use a saw cut and make curve cut, which still has the water going into it, but to use like an elastomeric uh, caulk, I run a bead all the way around the structure here. So when the water comes around, it hits the cap, it hits the uh, elastic merit. It tries to go around it, but the surface tension, it'll break free and fall free instead of rolling back around and coming back towards your column. Just a bead, just a bead. You don't do fancy set of, you could set a bead of a plastic bead there in a corner bead, anything that would make the water too great to be able to pull back up and come back down. It, you know, a whole lot of stuff, everything but metal, I would say. In fact, you probably could do something depending on the location that would be an anode anode get my now i'm getting my my anode yeah like an anode well would you do an anode i'm not sure it's just it's just something that i i think of and i just throw that out there um i throw it out there for you guys for example water sits on a shelf isn't there a better way besides paint to stop this water from sitting on the shelf everyone has this lower this lower issue here with water just piling and driving and driving and driving and sitting there but no one seems to appear to address it so after you paint it wouldn't you not just want to put a piece of rubber here down and around the yeah, and protect the, the oh i like this part protect the nuts they're screws all right so protect the nuts all right i can't help it guys these cracks are they telling it hey, well, it's a parapet wall it's going to be different you know it's going to be different than no, the parapet wall does not connect to the directly down, well, indirectly, but not the parapet wall sitting on top of a roof. So don't get all crazy about the parapet wall cracks. They're they're isolated from the from see at the top image. They've got isolation from the uh, from they're sitting on top of the damn uh, the the roof. Um, if I had an image, I would show you. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back to these, but right now, this is the quick glean and showing you showing you that. Now, I didn't get the E. Reinforced concrete flat, flat plate floors, concrete framing, supported by reinforced concrete columns on a driven pile foundation. Now, we don't know about, so we, it's a driven pile foundation. They do, we don't know if, uh, if it's, uh, I look at the 1979 plans. But that's what he says about a structural system. Reinforced concrete flat floor slabs supported by reinforced concrete columns on a driven pile foundation. So they were driven piles. They weren't poured in place. So this is going to be very interesting. I'll take care, guys. All the love goes out to you guys. Bye.